The second portion of our program continues with photography in flux. I'd like to just take a minute and thank our sponsors. The NEA, National Endowment for the Arts, has been very generous this year and we thank them. The MJSA, we'd like to thank them for perennially sponsoring the Professional Development Seminar. Before our panelists begin, however, our own Harry Estelle Berman has prepared a quick primer on the digital image. I'm here to make sure that all of you are up to speed on digital images in photography. Now, there was a handout, one single page, that had digital terms on it. Your handout will be your cheat sheet for the rest of the photography discussion. I'd also like to remind you that all your handouts are available online for free. You can download them. Okay. So you're looking at all these digital images, PSDs, TIFFs, JPEGs, and GIFs, and you wonder, do you know what they mean? Or are you confused? Well, there's a couple ways you can get information. The Professional Guidelines is here to help. You have brochures in your SNAG conference packet. But there's a specific brochure that I want to bring to your attention. It's the one with the blue cover. If you ever need any of these SNAG brochures for the professional guidelines, you can get them for free for your arts group or students. But this particular brochure, the one with the blue front, has two topics that are, will help you with your digital images, working with digital images effectively, and guide to professional quality images. The professional guidelines are available on the SNAG website, and they're also available on my website. These links are on your handout packet, so don't worry that you don't know where to go, and it's super easy to find me. Okay, so we're talking about digital image file extension. Are they alphabet soup to you, or do you really understand? This is your handout that we're passing around. Use it as your cheat sheet and guide for the rest of the afternoon. We'll start with raw images. Raw, like the camera setting. This is the only way you can get a raw image is if you start with it on your camera. This is what your professional photographer is using to shoot your images. Raw, like a piece of meat. Okay, I know you have that one. PSDs. PSDs are images from Photoshop. You would never email anyone a PSD. These are your images. They're very large. They contain layers. So your PSD has lots of different colors. In fact, millions of different colors. That's really important. There's your handout, so we've covered RAW and PSD. We're now going to TIFF. The letters for the TIFF are really big. The images are really big with millions of colors. Your TIFF image is your master image. It's used for print, like magazines and books. Your TIFF image. TIFF, super giant. Here, just a slight review, TIFF. Millions of colors, suitable for print, and master image for all copies. Ready? On your handout. Raw, PSD, TIFF. We are to JPEG. JPEG. The JPEGs have unique qualities. One of the unique qualities of JPEGs is the millions of colors. Fabulous. You can use them for email and internet. The reason why is the image is compressed. That's fabulous. Now your images are a lot smaller, but there is a problem. If you keep shrinking your JPEG, you're compromising the quality. So you don't want to open and have your JPEG shrink, and then open and save, and open and save, and open and save your JPEGs because you'll be reducing the quality of your image, and this will not be apparent to you on your computer monitor. 
JPEGs are commonly 300 DPI and 72 DPI. The 72 is for your internet. Shrinking images. I tried to make you some examples. The problem is that most likely on your monitor, you will not see how the image is degrading. So it has to be your best practice about using your TIFF as your master image. JPEGs are compressed images, millions of colors. TIFF is your master image for producing your JPEG. Got it? That's the really fast tutorial. We have two more. This is why it does seem to get confusing. Keep your cheat sheet. Use it as a guide for the rest of the afternoon. GIFs. GIFs are fabulous because they're also compressed image. I'll tell you the good thing about GIFs first. GIFs can be animated images. They can be like little movies on your website or your blog, and that's fabulous because you can have then multiple images, and the files are very small. It's not like uploading a movie. But the disadvantage is that GIFs have only 256 colors. Now, this is generally not visible on the internet, but would be a significant problem if you are sending a GIF as a print image. So don't do it. GIFs, shrinking images, small file sizes. Another advantage of GIFs, the unique advantage is that they support a transparent background, which is usually shown in Photoshop as this checkered background. So that can be very useful to you. And we have one more to go. At the very bottom, ping. Now, pings aren't very popular right now, though I have noticed that they're becoming increasingly more visible on the internet when you do image searches. Pings are great. They're also compressed images. They have a significant advantage over GIFs in that they have millions of colors. Fabulous. And they support transparent backgrounds, so you can remove the background on your image. Pings. RGB and CMYK. That's something I confuse all the time. So just to make sure you know, your RGB is going to be a camera setting. That's how you take your photos. And the setting is used for the internet. And it's the color of light. The color of light. So you think of theater lights. And you see the theater lights in front of you. And they're red, green, blue, like, just like that, theater lights. CMYK, print. This is your print setting, and it stands for the cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. Now, you do often see CMYK, but you weren't paying attention. It's your printer cartridges. That's your CMYK, and also, you often see it on boxes and packaging where they show you the color. So we're really actually much more familiar with CMYK than we think we are. One other option is to learn all about this is lynda.com. I highly recommend it. And it is an online tutorial. You can buy the CDs or you can buy a subscription and you can learn all kinds of software programs with video. It's so easy for all us visual learners. I include myself in that. It's a really fabulous way. So there we go. And we're moving on to our first speaker.